Welcome to Learn at Work, a webinar series presented by the journal Work, a journal of prevention, assessment, and rehabilitation. I'm Karen Jacobs. I'll be your moderator today and I'm the founding editor of the journal. So we have a, a really wonderful webinar in store for all of you today. And Patricia, I'm going to turn it over to you so you can introduce yourself and advance the slides. Okay, thank you, Karen. Um, well, oh, just let me see. Okay, so first of all, thank you uh, for the opportunities to share this study on social capital and bullying in the workplace. Uh, I hope that this presentation will give a short introduction to the concepts of workplace bullying and social capital in the workplace. I also hope that uh, it will give some reflections on why we find uh, that social capital in the workplace might provide some interesting insights into the development uh, and especially the prevention of bullying in the workplace. Uh, so here's an overview of the presentation and uh, first I'll give a short presentation of the authors behind the study. Uh, then we'll take a closer look at bullying and social capital in the workplace and some of the previous research. Uh, afterwards, I'll move on to the data, the measures, and the methods we used in the study, and uh, I'll present the results we found. Uh, and the last part of the presentation will focus on explaining the results in terms of possible mechanisms connecting bullying and social capital in workplace. Finally, I'll refine the results a little bit by highlighting some of the limitations of the study but also show uh, how these may point to some further perspectives uh, on the usefulness of the concept uh, of social capital in the workplace uh, in relation to bullying. So, <clears throat> uh, some short information about myself. My name is Patricia. Uh, I'm a work in an organizational psychologist. I have some uh, practical experience from both uh, occupational medicine and as an in-house uh, psychologist in a large pharmaceutical company. Uh, I'm soon to be employee of the Danish Work Environment uh, Authority and uh, well it, uh, I've been working a lot with work-related stress, work-related well-being uh, and the impact of the psychosocial work environment. Um, the collaborators in this study uh, are Karen Albertsen, Annie Hø uh, and Lars Peter Andersen and uh, they all have extensive practical and research experience within the field uh, of psychosocial work environment, within the field of organizational health and safety, and uh, especially the negative social relations in the workplace, uh, including bullying. So uh, I'm very grateful to have worked with all of them. Um, and moving on to, to the present study. So just trying to, to set the scene, what is this bullying in the workplace? Uh, it can be defined as when a person on a regular basis over an extended period of time is subjected to unpleasant or demeaning treatment uh, from which it is difficult to defend oneself. So definitions uh, of course are, are varied but uh, typically they vary on the time frame they define. For example uh, that this uh, the period of time is within the last 12 months, within the last six months. They often provide some kind of rev re reference to the frequency uh, of the uh, unpleasant or demeaning acts. It may be daily, weekly, monthly. And some definitions also include a reference to what the intentions behind the actions are, if they are uh, uh, negative intentions. Uh, regardless of, uh, of the definition, uh, studies show that exposure to workplace bullying can have serious consequences on many levels. Um, and targets of bullying report higher levels of depression, higher levels of anxiety, persistent somatic symptoms, suicidal ideation, long-term stress reactions, sleep disturbances, a higher risk of cardiovascular disease, and the list goes on. Uh, furthermore, and, uh, and uh, quite worrying, is that longitudinal studies show that these health consequences can be persistent uh, and uh, can be long-term, a minimum up to five years after exposure to workplace bullying. So it's a, it's a quite serious uh, issue. Um, besides these health consequences, exposure to workplace bullying has also been associated with uh, increased rates of sickness absence. 
uh, and for the individual an increased risk of exclusion from uh, the workplace and also from working life itself. So quite uh, devastating consequences. Uh, previous research also shows that workplace bullying is a complex uh, and dynamic phenomenon and that there are many possible and interacting causes and mechanisms. So I won't uh, go into all of them now, but I'll briefly uh, mention those that, that are related to the work environment. Um, previous research has more or less supported the importance of specific uh, characteristics of the psychosocial work environment uh, in relation to bullying. Uh, these include uh, characteristics such as role conflict, role ambiguity, uh, but leadership especially has been consistently presented uh, as a core element in the bullying process. Um, leadership si styles such as uh, tyrannical, autocratic and less fair uh, leadership has been associated with increased uh, rates of bullying. Um, but also factors related to workplace climate to workplace culture, uh, elements such as communication, how people cooperate, how experiences of injustice uh, and interpersonal and professional conflicts are managed uh, are important for the development of bullying. Um, in a Danish context, uh, workplace bullying is uh, explicitly addressed in laws that are related to the work environment and to the performance of work. And these laws state that the employer must ensure that working conditions are safe and healthy. Uh, also, the Danish Work Environment Authority provides guidelines for how to manage and prevent uh, workplace bullying. And these guidelines underline that workplace bullying is a workplace issue and it's not an individual issue. So, uh, this leads to a need to search for potentially uh, adjustable workplace factors. And uh, this is where workplace social capital seems to be an interesting concept. Uh, and I'll move on to that uh, now. Uh, so, defining social capital. Well, well the concept of social capital uh, actually belongs to a sociological tradition. Uh, it was originally applied to describe the reproduction, the efficiency, uh, and the cohesiveness of societies. Um, especially prominent in describing this was uh, Putnam, um, but lately the concept has also been applied to other areas, uh, including workplaces and organizations. Uh, within this context, social capital is described as a characteristic of the entire workplace. Uh, it provides an alternative perspective on on the field of psychosocial work environment uh, and it points towards new associations and possibilities to affect the working environment. Um, in Denmark, the tradition surrounding social capital in the workplace um, describes the main characteristics which are uh, mentioned in the slide here as mutual trust, organizational justice or fairness and cooperation in terms of norms of reciprocity. Um, in Denmark, these are typically ref referred to as the three diamonds. Uh, and uh, using this um, term, uh, it is communicated uh, to organizations in materials and information, and it provides a very simple and intuitive message that, of course, mutual trust, of course, organizational justice and corporations, uh, cooperation is important. Uh, another a defining feature uh, on social capital in the workplace is that it is consistently and explicitly tied to the main task of the uh, of the organization. So it uh, it concerns the reason for why the organization exists. You can say. Uh, so interesting about the, the the concept of social capital is that it ties together the hard aspects. Uh, of the workplace, the productivity, efficiency, uh, uh, to the soft aspects, the social relations, the psychosocial work environment. Um, previous studies on workplace social capital have shown that low social capital is related to higher levels of depression among uh, employees. Uh, it's related to higher levels of poor health, psychological distress, gossip and slandering. Uh, while uh, high social capital in the workplace uh, has been associated with um, 
issues such as effective conflict resolution. Um, yeah. So, tying these two concepts together leads us to the research question of the study. And the question was, how does low social capital in the workplace affect the risk of experiencing or witnessing bullying? Uh, the data we used uh, came from the work and health uh, questionnaire from 2010. Uh, it's also called the Danish Work Environment Cohort and it's uh, uh, administered or collected by the National Research Center for the Working Environment. Uh, if you'd like to, to know more about this, you can uh, visit their webpage. It has uh, a lot of additional um, information. But we, we had uh, more than 10,000 respondents uh, for the analysis. Um, and this is a self-report, a cross-sectional uh, survey. Um, it's a representative uh, questionnaire um, with people averaging uh, an age of 42.7 years, all employed at the time of administration. Um, it represents a wide range of different occupations, a wide range of types of workplaces, and included uh, 62 items uh, on work environment and health, including uh, items on bullying and social capital. Uh, and I'll present these items uh, now. So, um, as you can see, it, uh, the, the operationalization of bullying um, corresponds to, to how we defined it in the survey or in the study, that within the last 12 months uh, have you been subjected to bullying in your workplace, over several months been subjected to unpleasant, demeaning treatment uh, from which is, it is difficult to defend oneself. Uh, in the study, we chose to have an explicit focus on the internal relations in the workplace. So we excluded um, the response option of bullying from clients, customers, patients, and students uh, from the analysis. So we could focus on, on bullying that um, takes place among co-workers, among co-workers and leaders. Um, um, uh, employees and leaders. And we then uh, dichotomize these responses into yes or no to bullying. Uh, the items on social capital uh, came in uh, nine uh, items um, and these all included aspects of the relations between management and employees, what we call the vertical or the linking uh, social capital. Um, and the relations between employees, the horizontal, the bonding relations. And what you should notice about uh, uh, these items is how the questions are framed. And this is quite important because uh, social capital, as, as I mentioned before, is uh, a, a characteristic of the entire workplace. It should be understood as such. Uh, so we want to, to know how do people experience it in their workplace, not just their individual experience, but how, how do they experience it generally within the workplace. So respondents uh, were asked to think about the workplace as a whole, themselves and their co-workers. Uh, the words that are used are uh, terms such as we trust our managers uh, to get a more collective um, view on the social capital. However, still, uh, responses are individual self-reports, and, uh, and I'm going to get more into this um, when we move on. But anyways, all these items highlight the characteristics of social capital in the workplace, the mutual trust between employees and management, the mutual trust be between co-workers, uh, how employees experience that they receive fair treatment, uh, that management support, supports uh, employees' task performance, takes employees' needs into consideration, that co-workers help each other uh, to obtain this collective goal uh, of the best possible uh, results and that they uh, use each other's uh, knowledge and resources to, to create collective solutions. Um, in sum, these measure, measures that we used uh, were bullying, uh, exposure to bullying, but we also used uh, witness uh, to bullying, also in a, an attempt to spread out uh, this uh, concept of social capital so, so that it didn't just 
hang on to the individual experience, but it also included how do co-workers, what do co-workers experience. We used uh, the items from social capital and um, and we control for a range of work and env environment factors uh, as well as an individual factor, this work-related self-efficacy. Uh, and all these factors are usually associated with bullying. We also controlled for socio-demographic variables. For the analysis, we performed logistic uh, regressions uh, to get a picture of how the risk of bullying is related to the rating of social capital in the workplace. And I'll show you uh, the results now. Uh, and the first results are, show you the odds ratios regarding self-labeled bullying. And as you can see, the, the graph on the left shows how the social capital between managers and employees uh, are related to, to the risk of self-labeling as being bullied. Uh, while the right shows um, how the how the social capital between co-workers uh, affect this risk of bullying, and uh, the results are fairly clear. I would say uh, that people who experience low levels of social capital in the workplace have more than three times higher risk of experiencing bullying when compared to those who experience high levels of social capital in the workplace. So our reference group was was the high levels of social capital in the workplace. Um, and uh, to some degree, this is not that um, surprising, as, as you can imagine that individuals that are subject to bullying would understandably uh, have lower degrees of trust, um, perceive uh, justice and, and uh, collective uh, cooperation uh, as lower uh, than individuals that do not experience bullying. Uh, however, when we look at the results regarding observed bullying, which shows those that witness bullying in the workplace but that are not themselves uh, exposed to bullying, so we control for self-reported bullying in this, so these are only the witnesses of bullying. And here we also find some very clear results. Um, and you can see that the graphs show that people who experience low levels of social capital in the workplace, and this is both uh, between managers and employees and between uh, or among co-workers, that in both cases they have a significantly higher risk of witnessing bullying, and especially in cases where uh, the vertical social capital uh, between managers and employees is low. So the point about also including this observed bullying, uh, and and what I think the results here show is that it, or at least imply, uh, is that not only the targets of bullying experience individual low levels of social capital, but that this experience is shared with at least some uh, of their co-workers. Uh, I'll move on to, to try and explain the results. Um, so there are several mechanisms that can uh, can explain what connects uh, social capital and bullying in the workplace. And first of all, low degrees of social capital in the workplace may act as a risk factor. Uh, when social capital in the workplace is low, uh, you typically find increased levels of distrust, uh, inadequate conflict management, uh, increased levels of conflict um, and um, and uh, more perceptions of injustice. Um, also, you you may find that that with this increased distrust or low degrees of trust, there's an increased risk that you interpret uh, each other's intentions and actions as expressions of bullying. Um, yeah, so another mechanism um, that can explain these results is that high social capital can act as a protective factor. Uh, high social capital can be understood as a resource uh, within the workplaces, a resource by the means of uh, effective conflict resolution, good communication, trustful relations, uh, and especially when under pressure, 
uh, workplaces may gain from this. So for example, uh, during hard times and downsizing, uh, these uh, decisions uh, that, that may seem quite hard can be interpreted as just and as understandable. Um, and as you see uh, down uh, in the other point, that high social capital may hence be a buffer uh, that prevents negative and ambiguous acts from being interpreted as bullying. We trust each other, hence we, we try to find uh, some more positive interpretations of each other's uh, actions or we, uh, we communicate about it, avoid uh, misunderstandings. Um, and third, uh, high social capital may uh, create a buffer that makes it possible to solve conflicts in the bud. Conflicts are, are taken up um, before they get to escalate into bullying, for example. Also, uh, what is worth mentioning is that the, the causality may also be reverse, uh, so that bullying may undermine the social capital in the workplace. Um, and this goes without saying almost that employees who are exposed to or witness bullying may naturally lose trust in their co-workers, they may lose trust in their managers, it's, uh, it may be hard to understand how uh, or why bullying may be allowed to exist and, uh, and uh, these employees may lose trust in the ability of the workplace uh, to manage uh, injustice in the form of bullying. So, um, the, the results here can be explained in, in several ways and probably the relation between social capital and bullying goes both ways. Um, but this is also quite interesting. I'll move on to, uh, to some of the limitations uh, and I've only highlighted uh, a few of these, uh, but I think they uh, uh, they deserve to be mentioned here uh, and in relation to some of the reflections I'll, I'll draw on later. So first of all, um, it's a cross-sectional study, uh, which means that we cannot make conclusions regarding causality, as I just mentioned, uh, and it's likely that the causality is bi-directional and that the level of social capital affects the, the, the development of bullying and vice versa. Uh, the second point um, it refers to that it was not possible for us to aggregate the data on social capital at the workplace level. Uh, this is usually recommended when, when measuring workplace social capital uh, because as you might remember, workplace social capital is defined as a characteristic uh, of the entire workplace. Uh, however, um, other studies on, on social capital and studies that are not related to workplace bullying uh, have included analysis of social capital on different levels, for example, uh, including uh, analysis of social capital on both the individual level, the workplace level, community level, uh, and or the, the country level, and these um, studies have shown some quite strong cross-level interactions. So, uh, so we might wonder how this uh, may relate to social capital and bullying in the workplace. What does it mean uh, to have these different uh, levels of analysis? Uh, and what's especially interesting regarding social capital and bullying is that high group, high bonding uh, social capital, uh, this social capital between co-workers has also been associated with uh, this increased pressure to conform with group norms um, and hence a, a risk of social ex exclusion of members that violate group norms. So with a, with a group or, um, that has a very high social capital, there is a risk uh, of resistance to change and, and if uh, someone uh, tries to make changes, uh, this may be, um, this may result in social ex exclusion. Um, so this seems that, uh, that some important information can come to light um, by paying attention to how 
social capital in the workplace is distributed, how it varies among different employees and among different groups of uh, employees. Um, and, and it leads to the question uh, on how we can use both aggregated and individual ratings of social capital in the workplace. As I just mentioned, in relation to these group norms and, and high levels of social capital uh, among groups, uh, this is not unknown as well in relation to bullying. Uh, that bullying may serve as a social sanction uh, towards individuals that violate uh, strong group norms. So this may also be a risk factor. Um, yeah, so you may say that, that uh, an employee being excluded as a social sanction in a group with high social capital would possibly or probably uh, experience uh, very low social capital uh, while the rest of the group members would experience a high level of social capital or rate a high level of social capital. But at the average level, this variation and this dynamic uh, would not be clear. So just to sum up the discussion, um, what I'd like to pay to bring attention to is how social capital uh, seems to be a suitable concept for multi-level analysis of bullying in the workplace as this uh, concept can encompass both the individual experience of uh, to what degree do you trust and, and uh, collaborate with your co-workers, uh, how do you experience the, the, the levels of the management of injustice in your organization. It, it can also uh, apply to work groups and can encompass work group dynamics. And finally, it, uh, it can be applied uh, at the organizational level uh, to describe the organizational climate at the workplace. Uh, and all these levels are quite interesting in relation to, to bullying in the workplace as it, as it is a complex and dynamic phenomenon. Um, yeah, so just to sum up, uh, social capital uh, can point towards new insights, new associations and possibilities of changing the working environment in general. In relation to bullying, we found that employees who experience and witness bullying also experience a, a low level of social capital. Uh, and finally, the reflections uh, that we presented uh, concern how social capital may be meaningful at, at both the individual and the collective level, um, but the mechanisms between the two levels are, are unclear and unstudied. But it seems to provide some kind of a, a, a way forward that could be interesting to look at. Um, yeah, so that's uh, actually my presentation. And I would like to hear what you think. Uh, what do you think the results suggest? what is interesting uh, regarding this social capital and bullying in the workplace and how can we, can we uh, use these results uh, as a guide for further research, research or, or practical efforts uh, aimed at preventing, uh, most importantly, bullying in the workplace. Yeah. Alicia, thank you so much. That was so interesting. Um, thank you. I have a you're welcome. Um, I, I'm going to ask some questions here, and I do want yeah. um, the attendees to please um, type in their questions uh, in the mm -hmm. question area, and I'll read those. But I want to start off with, and I don't know if you had mentioned this, who is funding yeah. um, your, who funded this research? Uh, well, no one actually, because it was a part of my master thesis. Um, so we, we got to, uh, um, the data for the research um, came from this uh, survey uh, that was conducted by the National Research Center for the Working Environment uh, and they provided uh, the data for free uh, for us. That's um, so we were very grateful for that. Yeah. So um, this being your master's thesis, uh, what mm. motivated you to decide to look at these two areas together, you know, social, social capital and bullying. Because I'm not sure that, you know, uh, typically people would associate the two together. So what what motivated you? Yeah. What did you see in evidence literature that sort of was like this gap 
that he wanted to, to come up with some understanding. Yeah, uh, well at the time um, when I had to do my master thesis, uh, I was working as a student assistant at uh, a team Working Life, which is um, a consultant and, and research um, company, um, and they work a lot with the with the psychosocial work environment, uh, do interventions and uh, um, uh, investigate uh, problems in the working environment, and they also. Uh, uh, focus a lot on this concept of social capital, and I didn't know uh, social capital before I started working there, but I found it quite interesting. Um, at the same time as I was I was working there, I I got to assist um, on some of their assignments uh, in various workplaces, um, and uh, and the the topic of bullying in the workplace came up. Um, in some of these cases, uh, and and. Well, at first I thought that, well, it seemed quite straightforward that, that these two concepts might be related somehow, and I tried to, to find some literature on it, uh, but couldn't find any, uh, any studies that explicitly explored the, the association. Um, and then uh, I, I got to, um, at the time, the data from the, from the survey we used were a couple of years old, but they were freely available, um, and they had items on both bullying in the workplace and social capital. So uh, it seemed like a, a, a good starting point there. No, it does. Um, it sounds like you've really found um, two areas that really um, need to be better understood. Now, Susan, um, mm -hmm. one of our attendees, has posted a question. She said, "Do you have yeah. any questions?" as to how employers can improve social capital? Great question. Yeah, 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 big question as well. Um, well, the, the, the main, um, how can you say, issues in social capital is creating this focus on the main task of the organization. So, so trying to answer collectively the question on why are we here? Um, why? What, what is um, what is the purpose of being here at the workplace? What is the function? What is the main task we have to perform? Uh, and then investigating how. Uh, what means do we need to get there? You usually uh, by that it can create some kind of collective uh, feeling or collective understanding on why do we go to work? This meaningfulness. Um, and there are a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, tools uh, on how to create this, and and I'd love to give some examples on it, but but I think it's uh, too big to get into now. So you please uh, mail me um, the question, and I'll I'll dig deeper into it. But exploring and building on this collective sense of why are we here? What is our main task? How can we best help each other? Uh, perform it and and uh, reach it, um, and and uh, and to underline that we trust each other. We trust that we all work together to to obtain the same um, the same results um, is quite important uh, regarding social capital. Um, good good answer. Thank you. Um, Tamara, who's here at Boston University, is going to ask a question, and it's going to be audio. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Patricia. Thank you for the presentation. Um, my question was, would this be some um, data that you should include during a new hire orientation, for instance? Um, from my personal experience during orientation, we learn about workplace violence and how to report it, but they don't really say about how, yeah. how to report it. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the, the, the last uh, part. I was just saying that during the orientation, they, you know, they teach us and they inform us and train us how to report workplace violence and who to contact, but they don't have supporting yeah. data and they don't have any ways to prevent it, like the examples that you've given. So is that something you'd suggest that employers do? Um, in relation to workplace bullying? Yes, because we just cover yeah. workplace violence during training. We're in okay. We're in 
Okay. Well, I know that uh, that in in Denmark, uh, most uh, companies and organizations have a policy uh, on workplace bullying, for example, and these typically uh, state uh, how to how to act if you're exposed to workplace bullying, who to contact. They typically state that it, it, there's a no tolerance uh, regarding workplace bullying, um, and and also as I mentioned that these um, laws regarding the work environment, the ordinance of, of the performance of work, uh, state that this is a very serious issue um, to be managed. Regarding the prevention, uh, which I think is, is much more important uh, and should be a first priority, I, I don't know how, uh, how that is managed uh, in practice. I hope that answers some of your question. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Patricia, I'm going to ask you a question um, about the future. Um, what are you thinking about doing next in research? Do you have that opportunity? I know this was your master's thesis, but um, will you have the opportunity to do any more research on this topic? I think it could be really interesting to do more research on, the, on these uh, cross-level interactions. Um, but in my working life uh, at the moment, I've, uh, I'm trying to focus on getting some practical experience, getting out in, in the workplaces, seeing what's happening there. Um, so this is where my focus is right now. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm about to start uh, a new job at, uh, at the Danish Work Environment Authority, which gives me the opportunity to get up on a more strategic and political level uh, regarding uh, um, issues uh, on psychosocial work environment. So I'm very excited about that uh, and trying to get out and um, how can you say uh, affect uh, um, what's happening in the real life and what's happening uh, in organizations and the frameworks that the organizations have to work with issues uh, related to psychosocial uh, work environment. So that's where my primary uh, uh, focus is right now, but uh, who knows what the future will bring. <laughs> no, that sounds great. In fact, we have a, a special issue of the work journal um, that is um, yeah. put together right now on uh, psychosocial um, impact at the workplace, impact of psychosocial yeah. issues. So we have to have you do another yeah. article um, on a policy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, well, let's go back to that a little bit here for a moment. And if we were to say, what would be the key points that you would want to share from your study to policymakers? You know, what, what would they be? And how would you word that so that they see that what your findings um, are, are very important, um, you know, to, for legislation, mm -hmm. uh, funding, all of that? Uh, how would you yeah. say it to policymakers? Um, okay, wow, that's a, hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, I think the most important uh, message to get through is that um, the psychosocial work environment and including issues such as workplace bullying uh, is not uh, only and is not primarily an individual issue. Uh, and should not be uh, placed as a responsible on the individual, whether it's the target of workplace bullying or the presumed uh, perpetrator, but that, um, but that the context of the workplace um, is highly important and is also a, a very relevant uh, place to, um, to try and uh, change or uh, affect and, and that most workplaces, I, I think, is, it's just an hypothesis uh, from my, my side uh, as well, uh, would have much greater success when, if they tried to affect the conditions under which people work, the culture, the, the climate, um, how, how work is uh, organized. They would have much greater impact uh, on both individual well-being, individual relations and uh, productivity and efficiency than, than if trying to target the individual employees. 
for instance, in Denmark, we see a lot of focus on how to strengthen uh, individual employees' robustness or resilience, uh, giving them courses in individual stress management, uh, how to become more resilient. Uh, but I think it would be more effective to see how we can create some frameworks for all kinds of employees that uh, enable them uh, to act in resilient ways and, and focus on how to how do we create resilient organizations and resilient workplaces. Um, yeah, I think that's a, a, a point that I would like to uh, to work on. Um, if that makes sense. <laughs> no, it makes it makes a lot of sense. And you know, you're in such a, a, a new important role that you could have that impact and be an agent of change. So I'm going to um, go back in time for a moment. Mm -hmm. We're seeing so much bullying happening in schools, um, cyberbullying mm -hmm. online. Um, can any of what you found inform, say, the um, school environment as the workplace for you know the role of being a student? Uh, well, I don't know that much about uh, bullying in the schools, um, but I know that uh, it's uh, really important to have focus on, and I think uh, Lars Peter Andersen, uh, one of the co-authors of this article, um, made a study once that showed that if you're exposed to uh, bullying in school in schools, uh, you're actually at a higher risk of being exposed to bullying in your working life as well. So it's a, on that point, it's a it's a really important uh, area to set in and try to prevent. Um, and I'm I don't feel uh, that I'm that I that I'm that strong in in making. Um, statements about how social capital uh, could be applied in schools, uh, but I think it could be interesting to, to dip, uh, dip, dip, dive deeper into. Um, yeah. yeah, I think um, I think your study could inform a study looking at uh, the school environment and social capital, because I think that um, just what the evidence literature is saying, um, that bullying at this younger age can have an impact mm -hmm. Um, the person as they, you know, uh, become a worker uh, in the work mm. environment. So I'm going to um, put another one. You probably think I'm like doing your master's thesis events here, right? <laughs> but, um, you're a good sport, Patricia. Um, so another question I'd like to ask, and this one is looking at a whole different um, venue of where this information is promoted. So you, you yeah. in the work journal, which we're so happy you're doing, this um, yeah. webinar as well. But how could how could you reach the media? You know, what would the media, um, you know, the press, TV, radio, what would they be interested in in um, from your study? And you know, what might the headline be mm -hmm. that you, know, you could share? Uh, wow! Yeah, you're really putting me at the test here, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're never going to publish um, with us again. I hope teasing. I hope <laughs> no, I'm enjoying it. It's it's a uh, it's good. Um, well, I, well, I don't know. I, I would I, I think I would I would uh, send the question back. Like wh what what did you notice? What did you find was interesting? And and uh, maybe some of the the ones listening in, uh, what what um, caught your attention? Um, because that that might be a, a leeway to to what notes to play uh, regarding um, media exposure. Touche. That's great. <laughs> um, anybody here want to respond? Just come closer. Okay. Jimmy Jimmy's going to um, respond. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. <gasps> yes. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, one thing that comes to mind is maybe some kind of education on the concept of social capital and yeah. maybe, I don't know, some more education on how, let's say, it works and how it could be detrimental and, and favor bullying. Uh, you, know, yeah. you have a right to be different and it's okay and, you, and, 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 and as a member of a group you have to watch out for those kind of comportments. 
you say, behaviors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good point. <gasps> I, you know, I'm not sure everybody understands, um, in general, the construct of social capital. I think it's a very mm. important construct. Um, is there another term yes. we could use for social capital um, that maybe the media would understand better? Um, I, I, I don't really know that, uh, to be honest. Yeah. So um, I, always, I always think of social capital as, um, in some ways, you know, networking, building up that group of people that you know where you can turn around and, and you've done something for them and then mm -hmm. they can do something back for, for you. Yeah, and you can say that's that's one uh, part of the the concept of social capital. I think you refer to there uh, as the the norms of reciprocity that we trust that if I help you, then at some point you help me as well. Um, but I think that that it could be a bit dangerous to to pick out um, individual uh, issues in social capital because it's it's also more like a, a, the whole um, that there is this mutual trust uh, these um, that we trust in in the uh, justice that that things uh, are managed fairly and just um, and that we work together towards some collective goal um, I think the, the this sense of collectiveness that we as a as a whole as a group uh, come together and create something more um, is quite important as well uh, but I think in Denmark they've they've made a, a, a really good effort uh, um, by trying to use this concept of the three diamonds um, as a way of explaining social capital um, which makes it uh, quite intuitive uh, to understand. But I know this presentation is is a bit um, superficial in trying to explain the whole concept of social capital. So I hope you you've uh, gained some uh, interest and will uh, uh, keep reading more about it um, after this presentation too. Yeah, thank you. You made um, really good points here, and I I, I don't think that. Um, uh, three point is happening all over the world um, at all. Mm. Let me read what Susan, um, Sue wrote. Um, she wrote, I'm sure that most people don't understand it. She's referring to social, social capital. So explaining mm. it in simple language and saying how it can help individuals and employers um, mm. um, would be a good idea. So, you know, I think yeah. one of the things that come out, and I'm going to um, challenge you, to think about doing it, maybe in, in mm -hmm. your new role, is to perhaps yeah. have this one one tip sheet, um, maybe yeah. on how do what are some strategies um, uh, uh, about social capital that can help that can be built um, into the the workplace, and maybe that's something I'd be happy to publish it in the work journal. If yeah, that's something yeah, that's interesting. Together. Yeah, I like the challenge. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And you know, I'd like to I, I'd like to see more articles published on social capital. We haven't published very many on that. And I think a lot again, a yeah. lot of it has to do people don't quite un understand it. I think in Denmark it's it's um it seems like it's much more um part of the infrastructure of the country. Um and and yeah. strategy. But I, I, I don't think we're going to see that in many other countries. I may be wrong. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's a, it's an interesting point. Um, and I have to be honest, I, I, social capital is, there are so many different definitions of social capital and social capital in the workplace and it's very easy to get confused uh, in the concept and I still get confused in the concept regularly. Um, but there is something about it uh, in the core of, of this idea about social capital that's quite captivating. Um, so, <laughs> so I, I also uh, uh, still have a lot to to read about and uh, and learn about social capital uh, and what it means in in practice. Yeah. So, um, but um, yeah. 
one of the one of the comments just now was your whole study, the ten thousand people, are all in Denmark, um, yeah. and interesting to be able to gather um, similar data in another country, the United States. Um, yeah. Israel, India, yeah. Australia, and see you know if what differences we see that are cultural. Yeah, yeah, that would be very interesting. Yeah, a good. A good uh, it would also. Yeah, it would also be interesting to try and, and put this uh, other level of uh, of country social capital uh, on to see how this interacts with with what we're, what goes on in the workplace um, regarding social capital in the workplace and workplace bullying, for example. So some other challenges um, that we put forth to people when they're looking for perhaps a, a topic for a master's thesis or doctoral yeah. dissertation. Yeah. Yeah. So any last thoughts before we conclude um, this uh, webinar that we're very stimulating conversation and, and we're so appreciative yeah. of um, sharing your expertise with us. Any last points before we conclude? Uh, no, I just have one last slide and that's actually just, yeah, thank you for your attention and I really appreciate the opportunity to, to get to talk about this subject. I appreciate all your comments uh, and if you have any other questions or comments, uh, send me an email um, and also uh, if, if you uh, got interested into this subject, uh, you can read more about it in, in the in the article in Work Journal. Uh, there are also a lot of references that I haven't mentioned in this presentation, but they all come from the article. Uh, so there's a lot more to read about there. Yeah, and but, um, um, but thank, thank, you. You, thank you so much. And um, I believe we made your um, article free to read, so it's open access. Yeah. So it, oh, that's awesome. <gasps> everybody can read that. We're doing that with all of our um, webinar articles. Um, but we thank ah, you. Okay, oh, that's really good. Yeah, and for everybody who's joined us um, live, and for those who will be listening to this, if you enjoyed this webinar series, um, we have a Learn at Work webinar every month. Um, and we're just putting together our next uh, year's webinar, so please check out the um, Learn at Work um, Facebook site. Um, you can subscribe to our Learn at Work YouTube channel, and um, we hope that you will consider even submitting your work to our journal as well. So thank you again for joining us, and Patricia, thank you so much. We look forward to hearing about your new job and how um, your role as an agent of change uh, occurs uh, in Denmark. So thank you. Thank you, Karen. Yeah.